Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch a spill every week. Also, like and comment so I know what videos you want me to cover in the future as well. All right, so not too long ago, I talked about James Hudson, his origin, his abilities, and I did the same thing for X-23. So now I want to cover how these two cross paths, which takes place over a few different issues. But what I'm going to do is, is cut them up, put them together so it just makes sense uh, going back to back and skipping some of the extra stuff in between. And I'll leave all the links in the description below to the previous videos in case you want to watch those real quick and get caught up before we dive into this one. All right, so with no further ado, let's get into it. So in this video, what I'm going to do is start with how these two cross paths because X-23 is in the 616 universe and James Hudson is in the 1610 universe. And it really all starts with this little girl named Carmen Cruz who her mutant power manifests at her yearbook picture day. And her power extends beyond just opening portals from one location to another, but she can open to different realms and even different realities as well too. And we're giving different examples of this as she opens up these portals and gets a peep into these different locations or different realities. Like in this one, she's directly tapped into House of M. You can tell by Wolverine's jacket. And in others, she opens a doorway to other realms. Like for instance, the next one she sees is Asgard. You can mainly tell by the Rainbow Bridge. And when Carmen opens the doorway to Asgard, it's when we find out that this doorway can go both ways. And at that moment, the Asgard responds. He's like, hey, what are you doing here? And that freaks her out, so she shuts the portal right away. And at that point, she hears a voice say, don't panic. And that's when she's greeted by X-23 and the rest of the X-Men who arrive to assess the situation. And for the most part, it's trying to keep her calm because they're not sure exactly what she's capable of just yet. And I like it here where Iceman gets up close and he's like, you're a mutant, congrats. And she says, no. So he's like, yes. And she's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, what is your mutant power? Denial? The hell wrong with you? So Gene and Beast step in here, mainly trying to keep her calm. That's what Gene's doing. And Beast is running his diagnostic just to make sure numbers are cool and she ain't freaking out, zapping nobody nowhere. And they've got it under control at this point. But the next thing you see is the sirens come around, the police coming. Wee, wee, wee. Okay, I'm sorry. Every time I see that, I just think of that song. But with all the cars, the lights, the sirens, it freaks out Carmen again, and she zaps them all into like different locations. And not just different locations on their own Earth, but like in a whole nother universe. And Iceman's one of the first ones we see here who doesn't know exactly where he is yet, but he's like, anybody smell that? Smell like a cat pooped after eating little Caesars? Uh-oh. And we see that he appears underground in the Mole Man's lair, and he's not even sure that he's on Earth. And him even asking that pisses Mole Man off. He's like, of course this is Earth. You're inside of it, and this is my kingdom. I'm the Mole Man. And the expression on Iceman's face is priceless. Like, calm your ass down. Watch your tone. Let me use the phone. But moving forward, I'm going to skip over to Jean. And she appears up top side in the middle of New York. And she uses her powers to kind of scan his mind, see where she's at, and see what, what reality she's in. She knows that something is way off. And when she does that, she sees all the events that Miles has experienced from the 1610 universe. She sees events from Cataclysm. She sees the death of Peter Parker. She sees uh, the other X-Men that are here and also uh, James Hudson as well, too. Now, jumping over to Laura, she lands like in the middle of a football game, like dead center of the field in the middle of a play. And like the running back's finna try to run her over, but she takes one hand and just flips dude like over her head. And the coach comes out there cussing her out, turning to get off the field. And she's like, cool, cool, I'm out of here. But then one of the players grabs her is when she breaks her claws out. She's like, yo, don't touch me. And at this point, everybody freaks. They're like, yo, she's a mutant. They call the cops on her and that brings us back to the wee. I can't help it, sorry. And so the cops is on it, and this really reminds me of like Matrix, that Trinity scene on the highway with the agents chasing him. But X-23 hears him say they're gonna shoot the tires out, so she gotta switch it up quick. So she goes off the bridge onto like moving traffic. And I gotta say here, like, I would just love to see this take place in the film, like live action. It would be like just so crazy. Because you know the fall's not gonna kill her, but I just think it's dope that she acknowledges that th this finna hurt. Because she literally just bounced past herself off of a school bus onto an 18 wheeler. I'm talking about some Vin Diesel type stuff. And although it doesn't show us exactly here on the street sign where the truck is heading to, my guess is going to be it's a truck route that's heading up to Canada. And I'll show you guys why in just a minute when we get back to her. Now, jumping over to Angel, he actually lands in the Savage Land. But he doesn't know it's a Savage Land. He's just looking around and seeing all kind of like prehistoric creatures, these dinosaurs. He's looking at them like... <laughs> And as Angel's gathering himself, he hears somebody behind him tell him that he's in a savage land. And it is no other than James Hudson. Just sitting there like a creeper. And James demands to know who Angel is. Like, he has an idea, but he's not certain. And Angel's first response makes sense. Because he's like, man, you mind putting away that Wolverine starter kit? And right then, James is triggered. He keeps asking him, what's your name? Like, in a why did you say that name kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And this whole encounter just freaks Angel out. So he's like, yeah, uh, bye. And man, I get it. Like, if we just here having a conversation, like, why are your claws out? 
But the next thing you see here is James thinking out loud. He's like, Angel, but not the one that my dad worked with. Then he goes on to mention that he has his scent, so he's not letting this go anytime soon. So from here, we skip over to X-23, and she's like in the Canadian wilderness at this point, because that's where Wolverine-like people go. Um, But if I had to guess, I would say that she's looking for the closest familiar place that she can find, just so she can make sense out of all of this. And that leads her back to the doors of the Weapon X facility, which also in the 616 universe, Cyclops turned this same facility into the new Xavier school after he killed Xavier, of course, in the X-Men vs. Avengers event. And as soon as she gets to the door, she smells a very familiar scent from behind the door. But at a moment's notice, Angel arrives. Now, these two have an interesting history because like a couple issues ago, they kind of hit it off. And like ever since then, they've had these like little awkward moments afterwards. And I'm definitely doing a video on that. that that's got to happen. Like here when he touches down, he's in a light mood in spite of the circumstances. He's saying like, home sweet home, man, I'm not glad to see you. And he goes for the hug and she's like, uh, what were you just going to do? And he's like, hug you? And she's like, I don't do that, Warren. And you can tell she's more focused on figuring out how they got there. So Warren gets to telling Laura, yeah, you should have seen when I arrived. I was like at the South Pole and there's this prehistoric like jungle land. And she's just like, oh, you mean the savage land? And he was like, that's a thing? And she was like, yes. And Warren's like, man, I've got to do more reading. And immediately Laura tries to claw her way through the door, but that thing's frozen solid. And Warren's like, yeah, that thing's frozen shut and it's been that way for a while. And as soon as Angel says that, a voice from behind them says, that's how it's going to stay. And they look to see that it's James Hudson charging at them full speed, telling them to back away from the door. And it's like right here where Angel is saying like exactly what I'm thinking. How the hell did you find me? And Hudson just says that he tracked him. And I'm, I'm thinking like, dude, did you like swim across the ocean, run through two continents, dude? Like, that's it? That's all the explanation we get. But when Laura and James see each other, it's like distrust at first sight. And Laura immediately asks him, who are you and what is this place? But James is like, if you don't know what this place is, why are you here? And how'd you get those claws? And Warren's like, are you guys related or mm, something else? But they're just like in each other's face, sizing each other up like animals. And Laura realizes at this point that if he wanted to do anything, he would have tried it by now. But Laura's like, we're in trouble, we need answers. And we need to see what's behind that door. Now, you also got to realize that them meeting here is super huge. Because in the 616, mutants were born. But in the 1610 universe, mutants were manufactured. And that started right here with Wolverine. And when James explains this to Laura and Warren, they're like, no, that's all the way wrong. They tell James that this place is supposed to be a school. And Laura also goes on to explain that mutants weren't created here, that they were experimented on. And she knows this for a fact because she is the clone of Wolverine. And at this point, a light bulb starts to go off and it's dawning on Laura and Warren that they're not even on the right Earth. And this reality dawns on them in like a twisted kind of Twilight Zone kind of way. It's pretty cool. But what ends up happening after they calm down is they group up the, the X-Men that have been brought here and the ones that have been here. And they run back into Carmen Cruz, who's been trying to find them. And it's been a crazy search for her. She's even ran through like the old man Logan storyline in the process. And it's crazy seeing moments from that storyline kind of just peek into this one as well, too. But she keeps trying and she eventually finds them. Granting the heroes the opportunity to go back home. But that's going to do it for this one, you guys. Leave the comments below. Let me know what you think about James Hudson and X-23 meeting for the first time. Like me personally, in my mind, I thought it was going to be like an all-out bloodbath. But that made more sense when she ran into Dakin because he's a much darker character. Like his comic is literally titled Dakin Dark Wolverine. And I may do a series on that. I don't know. It just depends on you guys' feedback. Just be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll do it again next time. All right. Later.